Is everybody clean and happy right now? Can we go? Nate? Yeah. Do me a favor. Can, can I go with one of these for the first question? Uh, first three okay, Cookie, let's get the names, okay? Yeah, I got it. No, no. No, that's okay. Two will do. Okay. Um, hey, contestants, how you doing? Glad you could be here. How many people yeah, do we have playing today? Yeah, so you're playing with yourself, huh? Cookie, please. Okay. Sorry. I'm Did Oh yeah, uh, are you looking for a 7 question tournament length game or a full 21 question? Cool, roger that. 30 seconds. Yes. Your buzzer is the letter B, as in Betty bakes me bread. not to wait. You should have some fat in it, you know, some veins of fat right through it. And then get it on hey, a rod bread. Hey, we're running out of time. Cue the commercial. You know, we never had this kind of problem in Dan Nang. 20 seconds! Whoa, heads up. Alright, when a question pops up, you gotta buzz in. Then you pick your answer on the screen and hit the right key on your keyboard. You follow me? Ten seconds. Good luck. Nine, Two graphics. Lose the desktop. Okay, let's go. Let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Okay, go to black. Here we go. Thank you very much. Stand by. Okay. Four, three, hey, I'm off to France! Welcome to the program. <laughs> Just you and me for this show, huh? All right, partner, let's rock and roll. How about it? Hit me with a category. Get ready for some fun. It's question number one. Oh, yeah. This one's going to be old-fashioned child-rearing values. And we are talking 1000 bucks for this question. Now, for the life of me, I cannot remember the name of this Disney movie. You know, it's got that guy from Family Affair, and the parents separate singing twins who are supposed to be from Boston and California, but they both have British accents. What is that movie? The parent trap. There's a therapy bill I wouldn't want to pay. Alright, come on, hit me. Look to do is question number two. The category behind this question is Life, Liberty, and the Pursuit of Special Favors. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Archie has been elected student body president. In order to get a date with Veronica, he chooses to put aside funds for her project instead of Reggie's. This is an example of what kind of politics? Lame duck, absolutism. Isn't that a kind of vodka? In case you're curious about the correct answer, pork barrel politics. Okay. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Looking up your family tree. And we will pay out $3,000 for this one. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. You decide to have a family reunion with your Uncle Austin, Aunt Helena, your cousin Pierre, and your niece Olympia. If your name were Eugene, what would you... Let me guess, for a split second, you thought that the capital of Oregon was Eugene. <laughs> and here's the right answer. You're all relatives. Yeah, this is what we call a trick question. All right, come on, hit me. You're my question for forevermore. I love you. My question for. The category is toys that haven't gone through puberty. A right answer will get you two Gs for this question. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. You have a Slinky, and your brother has a Slinky Junior. What will your Slinky do that your brothers will not? Go down a hill, go downstairs, double the radio antenna, or... Co According to the manufacturer, Slinky Junior can't go down the stairs. I guess he isn't old enough yet. How about it? Hit me with the category. Ain't no job, it's question five. The name in this category is Beastly Affairs or Anything to Get Laid. Pop a right answer for this one, you got 3,000 greenbacks. Okay, we're coming at you, heads up. To win the favors of the lovely Lady Lita, the Greek god Zeus became which creature? A la- Beauty. A swelling swan. Alright, come on, hit. Uh-oh. 
West Truck Licks Nine More. It's time for a ticklish Pasco. This gibberish questions category is breakfast cereal and auto repair. Five grand is the opening value for this gibberish question. Okay, now remember, the faster you solve this puzzle, the more money you win. You ready to sort out some gibberish? Hope so. Tell me, what does this rhyme with? Melly, grab it. Mix car door skids. Let's see what you got, sir. Wait a second. Hey, look, you guys, it's really the rabbit trying to steal our cereal. Milly, grab it. Mix card or skids. Okay, pick a kid. Zaba dooba dabbin, question seven. Next up, melts better than cheddar. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. On packaged food, the first ingredient listed is the primary ingredient. Which is the first ingredient listed on a package of Velveeta, Oli Resin, Paprika, Sorbic, Enzymes, Cal- You're not gonna believe this. But you're right. How about it? Wow! Light, wait, elevate, hibernate, vegetate, The category, children's games and award banquets. Right here, 1,000 bucks for a right answer. Get ready to buzz, cause here it comes. If each of these children's games won an award, which one would be expected to thank the plague of London? Ring Around the Rosie describes the process of dying from the plague. Ashes to ashes, they all fall down. Alright, come on, hit me, we need a kick. Ooh, ooh, what's your sign? It's number nine. Here's the category. There's no such thing as a stupid question. And it looks like you can win a thousand greenbacks for this one. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. How many rings are in the three ring binder? The remainder of six divided by two, two, half a circle's radius with a diameter of six or the square root of nine. Square root of nine. Why, you cipher better than Jethro Bodine. And he done graduated the sixth grade. Okay. Yo, have you been with nasty number 10? This one's gonna be critters and calculators. And this one's gonna be worth $1,000. Is it possible that the television series The Beverly Hillbillies was written on a pocket calculator? See for yourself. Which is the only word that cannot be spelled out on an upside down pocket calculator? Oil, hillbillies, silly, or Ellie? Okay, we're at the end of round one, now on to round two. Woo now pay attention, because all the questions in round two are worth more money. Let's do it. The category is stuff you say on the street. And we are talking 4,000 big ones. Hang on tight, because here we go. Right, tell me, who the hell is Lisa? The Mona Lisa. Wipe that grin off your face. All right, come on, hit me. We well, 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 let's delve into question 12. All right, let's see what we're doing here. Manufacturing and the five senses. This question's going to be worth $2,001 bills. Get your eyes focused on the screen. Here we go. If you drove by a business called the Old Factory, you might guess that they manufacture prosthetic what? Eyes, noses, ears, or... Your olfactory sense is your sense of smell. Prosthetic noses. I bet it smells great in there. Okay, pick a category. The category behind this question is, bet you can't eat just one. You get this one right, you got 2,000 bucks coming at you. Okay, get yourself set, it's time. You're grilling up some foot-long human hot dogs. How many foot-long buns do you need to accommodate an average large intestine? Would you need five? Great job. Oh, 
Oh, that was the one you picked. Oh, sorry. <laughs> now, the correct answer is... The large intestine is a mere five feet long. Yeah, I'll have one with a side of colon. And, and can you throw some kidney stones on there? All right, come Next up, 80s bands that can't accessorize. And this one's going to be worth $2,000. Hang on, the time machine is lifting off and we're going back to the 80s. According to their lyrics, why does the band Men Without Hats not want to be friends with your friends? Because your friends can't dress, because your friends wear hats, because your friends are hateful, or because... <coughs> hmm, perhaps you're thinking of a different song. Should have picked this. Because your friends don't dance. And if they don't dance, well, sorry. I only hang out with dancers. Shallow, perhaps, but this is the 80s. How about it? Hit me with the category. The category, cartoons and fancy weddings. You get this question right, you pocket six grand. All right, the word nay means by birth, or in more colloquial terms, formerly known as. Now, if each of the following cartoon characters sent out wedding announcements, which of these would be incorrect? Donald Duck nay Quacky, Mickey Mouse nay Mortimer Mouse, Goofy nay Dippy. Donald Duck has always been known as Donald. <laughs> Flush your head down the latrine Ease your way with sour cream 16 The name in this category is Men with different colored eyes And this one shouldn't be too tough 4K for this one Flight attendants, prepare for takeoff If you went to Suffragette City, what would be going on there? Women would be voting Women would be voting Now, what the hell does the rest of that song mean? Okay, pick a category. Uh-oh, Test Nut Slick Crime Store. Once again, it's time for a... Flicker Piss No Scum. The category for this gibberish question, an infrastructure nightmare. The opening value for this gibberish question is going to be 10,000 bucks. Okay, to solve this puzzle, you got to think fast because every second and a half, I'm ticking off a little bit of cash. Okay, get yourself ready. Here comes the puzzle. What does this rhyme with? One bone itches, crawling clown. Go for it. Type in your answer. One bunch is crawling clown, crawling clown, crawling clown. One bunch is crawling clown. Hi, Jan Brady. How about it? Hit me. 18. What the slick clean? Number 18. Here's the category. Man's best food. I'm paying out $2,000 if you get this one right. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Judging by its name, which of the following dishes would contain no dog? Spits on a Ritz, spit turn turn spit, grunions and onions. <laughs> you know what you could have picked? You could have picked this. <laughs> grunions and onions. A grunion is a fish. All right. He's me. Oh. He's lame. Oh. It's, it's the 19. The category behind this question is The Spake Jack. I'll pay you $4,000 bills for this one if you get it right. Who might have placed the following personal ad? Single white male in search of single white female. Philosophical German Ubermann in search of Uberwoman. Must be yeah, good guess. John Locke. There's a German sounding name for it. Too bad you didn't pick this. Frederick Nietzsche, the German philosopher who reasoned that there's a type of ideal human being called the Ubermann and that God is dead. Okay. Wow, honey. honey! It's question number 20! The category is... There's no such thing as a dumb question. A right answer will get you two G's for this question. Hope you're ready, because here's one coming at you. How many strings are on a 12-string guitar? Half a score, the square root of a gross, a ream, or six? A gross is 144, the square root of that is 12. The square root of a gross. Uh, some people think of that as a gnarly. Time for the... Uh
Uh, you already know what you're doing. Well, make sure your match fits this clue. That's where the butler did it. There's your hint. Seconds. Are you okay? I don't know. I, I've got everything uh, I need here. I think. Yeah. Before the show today. Okay. Who left this box at the? Hello. How many people would like to play the game? Okay, you're a single player. Is that right? Okay. Why don't you type? Uh, one other thing. Hey, you're the boss. Done. Thirty seconds. Okay. Your buzzer is letter B. That's B as in. Uh, bet you wish you were playing the game right now. On a movie, and I totally put on nine and a half. I don't care if he's passing a like kidney stone. Five minutes into it. Twenty seconds. Did you hear me? I asked you. Yeah, all right, pay attention. People screw this up all the time. As soon as you think you know the answer to a question, buzz in. Then you have to hit the number that corresponds to the answer you want. You got that? Ten seconds. Just find me after the show. Okay. Let's lose the desktop, please. Seven. And go to black. Buzz. Get All right. Four, many fine hardware and plumbing Here we go. Beer Wiz. Ask for it by name. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Hey, 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 all right, how you doing? Playing by yourself today, that's cool. I'll close my eyes. Okay, let's get this ball rolling. How about it, we need a category. Let's have some fun. Here comes question one. The category is Nerd Doctors. 2,000 bucks for right answer. Hey, uh, could you help me out here? What's that one actor's name? Type in the full name when you know. You gotta know this. He starred in that one movie about the nerds. And later he starred with that guy. Go crazy! Anthony Edwards from Revenge of the Nerds, Top Gun, and ER. From nerd to hunk, and all he needed was a slip of paper that said medical degree on it. Ah, figures, huh, guys? Alright, next up. Hey, nice booboos. This one's gonna be $3,000. Okay, get your fingers ready. Let's get busy. Your city wants to host a rock concert, but its citizens are worried about an outbreak of bubonic plague, taking their names later. Bubonic plague is spread by fleas, and fleas hitch rides on rodents, so you're going to have to nix the Boomtown rats. <laughs> the upside is that you also have an excuse to ban Alvin and the Chipmunks. Category, let's do it. Siskel, Ebert, and Thumb Dexterity. Get this right, get $2,000. Film critics Siskel and Ebert seem to always disagree. When one gives a thumbs up, the other gives a thumbs down. While they frequently have oppositional thumbs, Siskel and Ebert always have opposable thumbs. If they wanted to show off this physical trait, what could they do to replace the thumbs up sign? Give a film the OK sign. <laughs> By having opposable thumbs, humans and other primates can touch our thumb with our index finger. Me, I'd prefer to see Siskel and Ebert arm wrestle each other. Take your... Shake it up the floor! Shake it up the floor! The category. What are you looking at? And this one's gonna be worth $1,001 bills. Okay, hang tight. Put your fingers on your buzzers. Here's the question. On your next vacation, you set off through the Marsh of Diseases, then hit the Bay of Dew, and finally head for the Sea of Fertility. Where are you traveling? In the state of Ohio, across the lunar surface. Bad answers like that can be Hobbit for me. Yeah. Ouch. Let me show you what someone smart would have picked.
are all points of interest on the moon. But if you're really into moons, next vacation, head to Fort Lauderdale during spring break. Okay, pick it. Uh-oh, press what's with Mime Door. It's time for... All right, this gibberish category is... Floss daily or else. This gibberish question starting out at five grand. You got 30 seconds for this, and I'm taking away the prize money a little at a time, so buzz in as soon as you know it. Okay, eyes straight ahead. What popular phrase does this rhyme with? It's got rust. The slob spits a bad denture. And uh, don't get fooled by the punctuation. It's a slogan for the armed forces. Army, Navy, Air Force, Marines. It's a slogan for the armed forces used to try to recruit people. It's a lot more than a job. You couldn't figure it out. Come on, soldier. You're supposed to be the best of the best. Besides, Spitz got Rust the Slav. Spitz a bad oh. Come on. War's a rocking good time. They couldn't say that on TV if it weren't true. How about it? We need a category. Oh, this is really big. This category is Gilliganistic Island. Get it right, get 2,000 bucks. Okay, peel your eyes, free your mind, cause here we go. What would be the most appropriate title for an episode of Gilligan's Island in which Gilligan gives up trying to find his way back to civilization? Gilligan's three-hour tour of empiricism. Gilligan's a, a fatalistic Gilligan would believe that fate made him a castaway and there's nothing he can do to change it. <laughs> So, why bother trying to get off the island or changing out of that red shirt and goofy hat? Come on, we need a... Category. There goes Tokyo. Two G's for a right answer. Check this out. Which of the following critters was not one of Godzilla's enemies? A giant frog, a giant lobster, a giant... Godzilla never fought a giant frog. It's a good thing, too, because I don't think there's enough tartar sauce in all of Tokyo to accompany a plate of frog legs that size. All right, go ahead. Here's why we hate number eight. The category is wipe that smile off your face this might be a hard one three grand hang on tight cause here we go if you take a really good look at leonardo da vinci's mona lisa you might notice a physical trait that could attract the attention of a certain fetishist what might such a person say to mona please let me lick your eyebrow stubble peel off the, the mona lisa has no eyebrows <laughs> It was fashionable for ladies to shave them off back then. Da Vinci, on the other hand, was into body piercing and moshing. Okay, pick a category. It's party time. Here comes number nine. This category is... Screw that. Let's just do it here. And this one's worth $2,000. Wow, you just can't stay away from the sex questions. Two in a row, huh? Well, it's not like we gave you much of a choice. Let's see how you do He's broaching. She's reaching. Oh, now they're both luffing. What are they doing? Sailing, enjoying the Kama Sutra, baking, or playing badminton. <laughs> Too bad you didn't choose this. Broaching, reaching, and luffing are all sailing terms. But with the pounding of the waves and the rhythmic up and down motion of the boat, do you blame them for wanting to do a little broaching? How about it? We need a category. She's the real McCoy. She's the real McCoy. Hey, are we talking about the cruise director by any chance? No way! All right, kiddies, we are making a celebrity collect call to the real McCoy, Ms. Lauren Tweez. All right, we're dialing up Lauren Tweez. Call up Lauren Tweez. Oh, God, did I have a crush on her. Oh, Saturday nights in front of the TV.
And then Fantasy Island right after that. Remember that? Right, it's right. Hello? Hello? I have a collect call from Buzz. You don't know Jack. Will you accept the charge? I'm... Sorry, I really can't... Lauren, hear... hi, it's, it's Buzz. Can you hear me? Oh, Buzz! Hi! Yes, operator. Uh, yeah, I'll take the call. I'm sorry, I was just outside doing some gardening. Oh, <laughs> bet it feels good to finally spend some time on dry land, huh? What? Uh, <laughs> nothing. Never mind. Uh... So, Lauren, I'm calling to see if you would come up with a trivia question for my contestants. Uh, you know, that thing we talked about? Oh, yeah. You know, I've been thinking about a question. Is it okay if it's not about the love boat? <laughs> You're the cruise director. <laughs> I'm the what? Uh, <laughs> nothing. Uh, uh, listen, I'm going to put you on with Cookie, our producer, and uh, you guys can go over the details, and we'll come back to you in a bit. How's that sound? Yeah, sounds great. I'll see you in a bit. <laughs> All right. We'll be back with Lauren Tweez in a bit. Uh, let's pick another category. Take your pick. What do you think? Hey, Master Blaster! Won't you find an answer? It's Ted! And we call this one, He Washes Dishes with the Best of Them. 2,000 bucks riding on this one. Okay, I need you to help me figure out the name of this uh, one TV character. Now, it's a fill-in-the-blank question, so you're going to have to do some typing. Now, tell me, uh, what's the name of this guy? You know, he's known for his domestic labor. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, he has this thing where he mutters to himself when he wants to insult somebody. He's also famous for being on two different sitcoms. And the really weird thing is... Come on, make me... Perhaps the only housekeeper to rise to the ranks of Lieutenant Governor, Benson Dubois. <laughs> if you ask me, I think he should run for U.S. Congress. I mean, hell, if Sonny Bono can do it, Benson's a shoe in Alright, we've been through round one. Let's get on to round two. Now remember, round two... Okay, everybody, we are back with Lauren Tweez, the lady with the open smile on the friendly shore. <laughs> <laughs> Lauren, are you ready with your question? Yeah, I think so. <laughs> okay, uh, let's climb aboard. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. The category is I Love Oysters. All right, and uh, we're going to make this one worth 5,000 stew beans. Now, I'm a really big fan of oysters, and over the years, living near the Pacific Coast, I've learned a lot about them. When oysters reproduce, they form baby oysters without shells. What are baby oysters called? Oysties, spats, oystlings. Is it spats? That's right. <laughs> baby oysters are called spats. Yeah, I ate one once and uh, I nearly spat it out. <laughs> Get it? I, I spat it out, uh, Lauren? Ah. ah, you should have been a writer for the love boat. Hey, Lauren, is it true that, uh, you know, you know uh, oysters are aphrodisiacs? Uh, you know, I don't really know. Um, I have to go now, Buzz. You take care. Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, okay, uh, thanks yeah, a lot. Yeah, um, bye, Buzz. Okay, bye. <laughs> If you ask me, there's only one Pacific princess. Lauren Tweez, ladies and gentlemen. All right, let's pick another category. Okay. Twelve. And this question's category is a little depple do ya. This one's worth $4,001 bills. All right, here we go. Based on the German translation of his last name, which role should Johnny Depp play in a production of Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs? Snow White, Grumpy. The English translation of the German word Depp is dope. But for some reason, none of his German viewers seems too confused. Come on, we need to... Take the elevator to 13. Okay, coming up, this category is... Are we almost to hell yet? 4000 bucks behind this one. Okay, when you know the answer, buzz in and start typing. Let's say Satan is taking his family on a nice little vacation. The Dark Angel of Death and his minions are traveling cross-country from their home in New Jersey to visit Devil's Tower, which state is their ultimate destination. Okay, go for it. Type in your... Uh, 
Devil's Tower is in Wyoming. <laughs> it's nice that the Devil family could go on a real vacation this year. The last vacation they took was just a long weekend at Rush Limbaugh's house. This one's gonna be the way to really fly. 2,000 bucks for right answer. Okay, take a shot at this. If you were to fly out of Orly Airport, have a layover in Heathrow Airport, and then land in Dulles Airport, where would you have traveled? New Orleans, Boston and Cannes, Geneva, Glasgow and Philadelphia, Paris, London and Washington, D.C., or Athens. For you, I'd suggest a complete makeover. Shoulda picked this. You would have traveled to Paris, London, and Washington, D.C. Yeah, I know. And boy, are your arms tired. <laughs> the category is horseplay. And this one's worth $4,000. We all know the cliché, don't put the cart before the horse. Well... Suppose you do put a cart in front of a horse and the horse trips over it and dies. If you then try to fix things, which of these cliches would best apply? Don't change horses in midstream. Don't look a gift horse in the mouth. No. Duh. In case you're interested, here's the right answer. If you're too late in taking action, you're locking the stable after the horse is gone. And in this case, your horse bolted to that big stable in the sky. How about it? We need a category. An outstanding selection, because under that category is one major league point racking question, the Dis or Dad. The category for this Dis or Dad question is, cartoons should be seen and not heard. I'm gonna re- I'm gonna- Oh, alright, you already know how to play. Well, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's do it. Bugs Bunny talks or doesn't talk. Snoopy. Pluto. Dopey. Papa Smurf. Roadrunner. This is it. Pink Panther. That's all. She wrote. Only one wrong. Pretty damn good, cowboy. Let's toss that into your total. Yeah, good shoot, Dex. Okay, let's keep a moseying on here. Okay, pick a category. Category, let's do it. Two Joes are better than three. We got four grand on the table. Hooray, it's a Facts of Life question. If you combine Joe from Little Women with Joe from Facts of Life, what might you get? A headmistress who can fix a motorcycle, a trainer for a horseman of the apocalypse, a little person who's sexually adept, or a babysitter on the first... Come on, Death, we're feeling this time. Sorry, Joe. Too bad you didn't pick this. Joe from Little Women started a boys' school. Joe from The Facts of Life could fix motorcycles. Class, today's reading selections will be from Goaty's Ladies Book and Outlaw Biker. Alright, go ahead and pick one. Alright, next up. Hollywood in the 16th century. Papa, right answer, you got 4K. All right, fingers limbered, cause here comes the question. If each of the following had lived in Shakespeare's time, who would have most likely played Juliet in Romeo and Juliet? Julia Roberts. In Shakespeare's time, all the roles were played by men and boys. <laughs> Keanu doing Shakespeare would add a whole new meaning to Bill and Ted's excellent adventure. Take your pick. What do you say? The category. Stop, or I'll fill you full of static. We are talking four big ones. All right, look closely at this really fake movie still and tell me... 
What's the best title for this picture from a western starring Clint Eastwood and that fabric softener bear? White Hunter, bounce hard, every whisk way but the good, the bad, and the snuggly. Clint starred in the good, the bad, and the ugly, and Snuggle is the fluffy fabric softener mascot. And this category is another television travesty. Get this right, you're bringing home 6K. Get your fingers ready, here's one coming at you. Imagine Sherwood Schwartz produced a Brady version of a famous Chekhov play. In what context might you find the line, Masha, Masha, Masha is a character in Chekhov's The Three Sisters. I'm sorry, Jan, but Kaligan and Vershinin both want to date Masha. Why do Kaligan and Vershinin always want to go with Masha? Masha, Masha, Masha. How about... Jack. Ooh, okay. I'm not wasting any time. Let's get into the attack. Don't forget this clue. What did I do wrong? Yeah, you might be saying that to yourself in a few minutes. Good luck. Did your score? That's the game! Woo! You wanna lie down? That must have taken something out of you. Well, let me fill back up your electrolyte count with these words. Thanks all around. <clears throat> Good show. Uh, let's roll commercial, please. And uh, Cookie, what's going on with these players? So, you're moving on up to the high scoreboard in the sky. Well, if you're expecting the red carpet treatment, you can forget about it. You're going to get the soiled dish rag treatment as far as I'm concerned. Test two. Cookie Hun, we're getting a little feedback. Could you turn down the levels hey there, on your mic? To the show. Oh, Thank I'm you. Sorry. What do we have playing? I usually just get it. Flying solo. I've never seen one of those spikes on the wires. No problem. You have the letter B as your buzzer. That's B as in babesiosis. Uh, it's a cattle disease. 20 seconds. Can somebody change that color filter? You betcha. If you could do that, I'd appreciate it. Thanks. 20 seconds. Oh, boy. Uh, okay. When you know an answer, buzz in. If you don't, don't. But if you buzz, you only got a few seconds to pick one of the choices or you're going to lose cash. Follow me? All righty then. 10 seconds. Good luck. Nine. Your money. Get rid of the desktop, no please. please. Let's go Six. to black. Bye. All right, folks, see you on the other side. The Three. Parka. Silver Lining Tarot Center, making the great beyond just a little bit greater.
It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. Welcome to Jack. Just you and me tonight, huh? None of your friends want to get together, so why not hang out with the game show host? Really, thanks for thinking of me. Ah, the game of solitaire. That's okay, I'm here alone too. So let's get it on. Category, please. And this one is, I guess that's why they call it the blues. Get it right, I'm handing over 2K. Put your tray in the upright position, it's time for takeoff. Which of these Eric Clapton songs would you expect to be about a guy singing the blues for a six-winged angel? A seraph is a celestial being which has three pairs of wings. And a bitch in triple neck guitar. Okay, I need a can. May I introduce, live from New York, this one can net you a grand. Remember when Saturday Night Live first came on the air and it was funny? If Dan Aykroyd and Jane Curtin were to deliver their point-counterpoint editorials in counterpoint, what would they be doing? Proselytizing? Counterpoint is a musical term referring to playing two different melodies at the same time to create harmony. Okay, pick a cat. One, two, two, raise the almighty three. Well, looks like this category is kidnapped. And you pocket 2,000 bucks if you get this one. All right, take a gander at this picture and tell me. If somebody sent you this picture in a ransom note, what would you probably not be able to do until you paid the ransom? Make ice cubes, change the oil in your car. If you open the back of your toilet and look inside, you'll see this doohickey. And if the kidnappers are asking for more than seven or eight bucks, just drive over to the hardware store and buy yourself a new one for Christ's sake. I need a category. Stop at three, no, you gotta have four, yeah! Open wide and get ready for, hey now, keep it clean. You get this one right and it's $3,000. Put it in gear, cause here we go. If Comet Cleanser really could be used to clean comets, what might their slogan be? Keeps your Coronas looking stellar, puts the lithe in lit- The bulk of a comet is made up of ice, dust, and rocks, and is commonly referred to by astronomers as a dirty snowball. So what is the big deal about comets then? My mom always told me to stay away from the dirty snowballs. All right, hit me. You don't want to blow it on number five. Okay, give it up for... How does one get to be a Sergeant Major Kangaroo? This one's worth a grand. Uh, let's see if you can wrap your head around this. Suppose Captain Kangaroo were replaced by another marsupial. Who and if you look to your left, you'll see the popular wrong answer. Should have picked this. Sloths are not marsupials because unlike the others, they don't give birth to premature young and carry them to term in a pouch. Plus, they don't have silly mustaches and goofy red jackets either. Category, please. The selection is Barely Alive from New York, and it's worth $2,000 if you get this one right. Hey, remember when the only thing you had going on Saturday night was Saturday Night Live? Oh, boy, I remember that. You, boy, I do. Here? I love that show. In fact, I got a question about it. You want to hear it? What do you think, boy? Well, all right. Well, well why not? You know, I, I think we've got ourselves a guest host question. Uh, welcome aboard, old man. Great. I'm, I'm glad you're here. Oh, you mean now? Yeah, just talking to the mic. The mic? The, oh, this thing? Yeah, it's a mic. Okay, hello. One, two, scoodly doo. Yeah. One, two, yeah, hello. Yeah, we got Mikey, that. Yeah, Mikey, we got the level. You're on. Sibling. Give us a question. Okay. If I were, <coughs> excuse me, if I were to ask the oldest person ever to host Saturday Night Live out on a date, what would be my pickup line? Hey, Golda Meir, you look cute. You're sweet, Candy Bergen. Nice blouse.
Miss Spillman. She was the oldest host of Saturday Night Live. <laughs> You may be sitting at the keyboard wondering, who is this Miskel Spellman? Is she some kind of famous actress or a dancer or something? Well, no, she wasn't. She was a little 80-year-old hottie who won the Anyone Can Host contest. Hey, wait a minute. Anyone can host. <laughs> hey, Cookie, that was fun. Can I be the host from now on? Yeah, no, you, you cannot be the host from now on, but you can leave and take this thing this what bag is with, what is that don't, don't even yeah. ask i'm out of here get yeah, yeah. bye okay i need seven lucky lucky seven pucker up for the sounds of psychosis one thousand dollars at stake on this one flex those fingers because here it comes you're suffering from an irrational fear of 80s duos with bad shaves. What is the most likely term for your phobia? The Nelson Willies, the Wim Whams, the Heebie Bee Gees, or the Vapors? Now, that's the delusion that you're turning Japanese. Here's what you should have picked. Wham! Two smirking guys with defective razors. Another symptom of the Wim Whams is bedwetting, the failure to wake up before you go-go. All right, hit me. Uh-oh, Elmer Fudd Dime Store. It's time for a conversation. Step right up to your gibberish category. Dangerous menu items of the South. This question's going to start out at 5,000 big ones. Okay, you're going to have about 30 seconds to solve this, but every second and a half, I'm taking away some money. Okay, pay attention and tell me, what popular catchphrase does this rhyme with? I've some blue pork. Grits platter, they white. And don't let the punctuation trip you up. First clue, it's said once a week. On it's all yours. To Or as I like to say, syndicated on Comedy Central, it's Saturday night on another day of the week. I need a cat. Aloha, question number nine. This category is known as Up and Adams. Two thousand bucks for a correct answer. Think fast. Imagine that the Adams family is visited by a cousin, Nick Adams. Given the author of the Nick Adams stories, who most likely joined the show's writing staff? Ernest Hemingway. The name is Lurch. 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 In case you're wondering, Ernest Hemingway. You can already see his influence in the Adams family theme. They're spooky, altogether kooky, they live in a museum, people come to see them. Okay, pick Nice choice, lover. You've just been invited to a three-way. Okay, this is simple, but hear me out anyway. You're gonna see a three-way like this one. Ah, uh, geez, I guess somebody's not nervous about this. Well then, uh, let's see what we've got waiting for us under the sheets. The category for this three-way is a nun in a blender. You've heard the old joke, right? Because this three-way is black and white and red all over. Time to start seeing the goods. Let's hope you're up to it. Oh, yes! And it looks like we're all done. Let's check out your performance. Nicely done, a perfect score. Must be all that practicing alone, huh? This should firm up your overall score. 
So, is it as good for you as it was for me? Probably better. Okay, let's get on with the game. One down, round two to go. Let's get on it. Every question in round two is with... Category, please. Well, what do we have here? It happened one dark and stormy night. Get a right answer, you're walking away with four grand. Okay, time for some frank talk. We all know that adolescent males have wet dreams or nocturnal emissions. Hey, stop giggling, it's biology. Say instead of nocturnal emissions, boys had nocturnal field emissions. What would they be releasing from their pubescent genitals? Electrons, grass seeds, in physics, a field emission is where an electric field causes electrons to be released from a conductor. Hey, I'll take electrons any day. At least you don't have to hide the sheets from your mom the next morning. Okay, I need a category. I'm getting a reading of 12. Over. For your enjoyment. And you thought they were morons. How does $2,000 sound? Alright, the next time someone tries to tell you the Three Stooges are lowbrow, well, they'll probably be right. Still, imagine the scenario. Suppose Larry flings a pie at Moe in order to demonstrate Newton's first law of motion. Assuming they're in a vacuum, what will the pie do? Would it move backwards in time? According to Newton's first law of motion, an object will continue to move in a straight line and at a constant speed until something interferes with it. And since they're in a vacuum, this will happen right before Mo suffocates to death. And everyone will have a good laugh. All right, hit me. Swing your partner one and three. A do si -do for the big third time. Let's see what we got going. A tower with no windows, 95. 4,000 big ones for a right answer here. Okay, everyone knows that Bill Gates' huge house in Washington is like a modern-day castle, right? If hundreds of disgruntled Microsoft employees decided to storm Bill Gates' house as if it were a castle, how would they use a trebuchet? A trebuchet was a large catapult. Invaders used it to throw dead animals and spread disease in the besieged city. Boy, it's a good thing I had that Star Wars laser defense system installed. Okay, pick a category. Oh boy, now it's time for some real trivia. You've got an impossible question coming your way. Shake hands with pop music is so deep. And let's see, this one's only worth uh, $20,000. All right, get ready for the impossible. Because it features a word which has the most meanings According to the Oxford English Dictionary, set has more definitions than stand, turn, or take. <laughs> Would have been nice if George had used a dictionary to try and come up with more words to the song. I need a category. Not 14, not 16, you're right in between. The category is, that's gross. Play your cards right, you win 4,000 bucks. Okay, for this question, I want you to... Uh, hey, Cookie. Come on, I'm doing the show. Oh, I, got, I got your paycheck. Oh. Oh, thanks, Ray. I thought we were supposed to get direct deposit. I don't trust that stuff. Man, can you believe the taxes they take out? You know, if we got paid more often than every other week, we'd end up making more money. Really? Sure, more frequent paydays, smaller paychecks, smaller percentage of your taxes taken out, bigger net pay. So it'd be like getting a raise, huh? Okay, folks, try this. Under which pay period would I receive my paycheck most frequently? I earn a lease. Excuse me, but bi-weekly is every two weeks, which is what I get paid already. I knew a guy who was bi-weekly. No, no, you didn't. He said he was. N no, just... Trust me on this one. Let's see what somebody smart would have picked. Why'd you say that? Because they didn't get it right. So it's like they're dumb. Th yes, like they're dumb. Go ahead. 
I'd tell them. Um, semi S- semi diurnal. Yeah, is half a day or every twelve hours. Well, thanks for bringing my check, Ray. I I gotta finish up now. Sure. Uh, so that's all you do is read this stuff? Well, pretty much. Yeah. How much they pay you? Get out of my booth, man. Get out. Monkeys I work with. Moving on. Category, please. Hey, all right. Guess what you just picked? It's time to play Dis or Dat. This Dis or Dat's category name is Got Milk of Magnesia. Mm-mm-mm. Uh, oh, so you already know how to play. Okay, let's put 30 seconds on the clock then. Let's do it. Shingles, medical disorder, rickets, crunch berries, polyps, frosted flakes, mobs. Last one, great. That's all she wrote. You are a very smart person, and I want to see your new score. Feel good? I hope so, cuz we still got more Jack. Okay, I need a category. On the big bayou in Louisiana, quest on 17. This one likes to go by Cows Collect Stamps 2. This one can net you $6,000. Just step up and take a swing at this one. If Elsie the cow wants to write the most impressive resume possible, which of the following qualifications should be generally found only in restaurants and higher priced butcher shops, USDA labeled prime beef is the best available cow meat. <laughs> Well, guess Elsie's headed for what they call a dead-end job. I need a cat. This one's called, I Dated an Alien. And get this one right, you got 4K coming your way. Okay, listen up. For the sake of argument, let's say the first, second, third base making a home run analogy for sex also equates with close encounters of the first, second, third, and fourth kind with aliens. If you get a home run with an alien, what happens? You take pictures of a chip from the bushes, you go to meet its parents, you feel its breast through its spacesuit, or you dream about the alien. Oh, must have hit the wrong key. It happens. Hey, got a minute? Take a look at a right answer. A cl- Close encounter of the fourth kind is actually abduction, so your alien significant other is going to drag you onto the ship to meet its family. I know you like him, but why can't you date a nice Martian boy? But Mom! Okay, pick a category. Here we have nose plugs sold separately. That is four thousand dollars. Grab ya. Okay, what I've got here is an alien sociology textbook about Earth. Buzz in when you know what the hell these guys are talking about. Female leader of independent agrarian children's commune in which members represent specific produce via appearance and. Strawberry shortcake. She lived on a farm with a bunch of her smelly friends. and you think they smell fruity, try having an intellectual conversation with one of them. All right, hit me. Question number 20. This little number's known as super secret, do not read. Better wake up, there's 6,000 bucks at stake. Hey, I was going through somebody's diary and came across this. Check it out. Dear diary, one Nobel Prize for chemistry with hubby today, but so what? Mom never lets me forget. Irene Joliot Curie was Mary Curie's daughter, who, like her mother before her, won a Nobel Prize with her husband for research in the field of radiation. And they both died of leukemia from radiation poisoning. Hey, can we talk competitive? Category, please. Get to the attack, consider it done. 
You may need this clue. What are you, little furry thing? Uh, I'm not gonna touch that one. I mean, I'm not gonna go into that one. Wait, never mind. <clears throat> Good luck. Nicely played! Let's see how you affected your final score! That's the game! Player, I couldn't have done a better job myself. But then, I wasn't playing by myself, was I? But seriously, player, and I don't say this to just everybody. You don't know, Jack! Beautiful! Very nice work, people. Hey, Raul, what's up? Are we doing another one of these? My, my, my! Knocking somebody right out of their place. Down, Way to go. Through. I'm impressed. Now, hey, if you want to play another game, let me know. Greetings. Welcome to the ride. I'd like to address your irrational fear of clowns with a trip down to our circus floor. Not that it will work. I just like tormenting people. Anyway. How many of you are there? Nobody else to play with? Well, who needs them? Is this your first... Welcome back. We may tease you a lot, but we've got you on the spot. Welcome back. Please type in your... Perfect. Thank you. I need to remind you that your buzzer is the letter B. I'm so sorry to say that our time together is finally over. Enjoy your ride. It's time for the show where high culture and pop culture collide. This episode of You Don't Know Jack is sponsored by... Little Frankie's Flea Circus. The circus where every kid's a wiener. And now, here's the host, delicious as his name, Cookie. Hey there, welcome to the Big Top. What, I am I a clown? Do I scare you? Well then, step right up. <laughs> So, uh, are you ready for a three-ring circus? Mm-hmm. Let's ride. Coming up. Circus of the Flaming Gassy Stars. Okay, you remember Circus of the Stars, right? Well, suppose you see a circus feature... I don't get it. It went over great in Peoria. White Dwarf Stars are stars that are about to go out once and for all. And I understand they prefer to be called White Little Stars. Alright, here's your category. Nothing like a circus tragedy for a good laugh. So, you want to see the question? Yeah, me too. Here we go. Which of the following sounds would you... A funambulist is a tightrope walker. I'm guessing they wouldn't be amused by the sound of someone falling to their death. 
showing on America's Funniest Home Videos. <laughs> and we're talking instant comedy. It, it's roadkill time. All right, when you see the answer that unites the pair of items on the screen, buzz in. And don't forget, bonus cash for the bonus puzzle at the end. All right, put it in gear, we're going. Pertaining to Greek God's home and Cobalt Blue. Watch the intersection between these two. The woman wears white and close association. Big Invention, an ELO hit flank line. Hypermedia System, and Spider's Domain. Score. Place to hang your shoes, and Shaft's Richard Round Blank. a blank day in blank Helena. Score. High ranking military officers and orchestra section. Bonus time, what do all the correct answers have in common? Are they all amateur sports? Christmas ornaments? Slumber party games? Types of ring? You nailed it! Crack it up! Man, give me a ring sometime. That's what your current score looks like. Let's keep going. This one's called... I'm a graduate of Wasamata U. Okay, hang tight. We're talking about $3,149 here. Here we go. If Rocky the Flying Squirrel became a Flying Walenda, what would he be? The Flying Walendas are a legendary family of circus performers most famous for their tightrope walking. Unfortunately for Rocky, if he were a Walenda, he'd probably also be known for falling off of said tightrope. That is certainly not shabby. Now, let's see your category. Run, don't walk away from your problems. And now, the question. Who would be most likely to run off? Good bet. Circus Circus is a Las Vegas casino. They've got an amusement park there, a hotel, restaurants, circus acts, everything for the quiet loner who doesn't like quiet or being alone. The category is... I'm so mad I could toot. You ready? Let's go. If you're angrily playing the organ-like instrument known as the calliope, what is the most accurate way to describe... What the hell is wrong with this damn piece of mother damn sucker? A calliope is a steam-powered musical instrument, so you'd be blowing off steam. But you just can't stay angry for long when you're playing a calliope, now can you? Okay, give it up for... Boy, did you pick a dilly. Okay, play ball. If London's Piccadilly Circus were actually a circus, who would be the ringmaster? The god Eros Lord. In the center of Piccadilly Circus is a fountain statue of a little winged guy. The statue is known as Eros. And if you like clowns, you'll love Piccadilly. There are clowns everywhere. Clowns who shop and have funny hair. Hey, but your category is... Any Palomino is a pal of mine. No. Let's get going. Say Ringling Brothers actually had a unicorn. According to legend, unicorns can only be captured by virgins. Well done.
I mean, who would you go to if you were a horny horse? Okay, nice shot. Here's your category. The greatest math test on earth. You've heard P.T. Barnum's famous quote, there's a sucker born every minute, right? Well then. Um, how many suckers were born last April? 1,440, 43,200. 60 minutes times 24 hours times 30 days means 43,200 suckers. Of course, since 1871, when Barnum started his circus, there have been about 62 million suckers born, which pretty much explains the Midwest. Oh, what? That joke killed him in Peoria. It's your Holy something. Here's your category. Always remember to keep your barker on a leash. Hey, you know carny is slang for carnival worker, right? Because they have a carny. Wilson Phillips has a China, a Wendy, and a Carney. And how do they guess your weight? They hold on. <laughs> you, you, you see, that that's the name of their big hit song, Hold On. <clears throat> have some water. All right. Are you sitting down? Well, of course you are. You're at a computer at any rate. Well, wouldn't you know it, it's time to play Dis or Dad. The category for this Dis or Dad is... Let's talk about family. Okay, I'm gonna read off seven names, and for each one I want you to tell me if it's... The name of someone from the comic strip Family Circus, or someone from TV's Family Ties. Each right answer, you get some cash. And you lose cash for a wrong answer or any you don't get to. Okay, you have 30 seconds to get all of them. Let's do it. Chadwick! Hillary! Billy! Skip! Jim! Ollie! PJ! Yes, you rock. Check it out. All right, there it is. Let's keep moving. All right, bang your butt. I like to call this category... It's a three-nipple ring circus. So, have you heard about the bizarre spectacle known as the Jim Rose Circus? They were part of Lollapalooza, for instance. Well, anyway. Say you attend the Jim Rose Circus. You know, the Jim Rose Circus provides a lot of unique entertainment, but uh, that particular act is not part of it. Okay, folks, let's hear it for Spineless Susie! And remember, ladies, do not try that stunt at home. Yeah, right. Clowning around, here's her clue. All that in one tiny car. But let's not talk about my sexual exploits from high school. Let's uh, check out this jack attack. Perfect! Too bad you had no one to share it with!
bring nature to your bathroom with twigs and leaves. Very natural toilet paper made of twigs and leaves. It's not post-consumer content. It's not recycled paper. It's not even paper. It's just twigs and leaves. We collect from the forests of America. Back in the natural days, before there were real bathrooms, before there was toilet paper, they used twigs and leaves. Pick up a sack today, now with 50% fewer thorns, not for use with actual plumbing systems. Join me. So you want to hook up online or play at home? Home sounds good. How many people are playing? Okay, let's see. You got a name? Great, that takes care of that. You want to make a date for instructions? Yep. Okay, choose wisely. of my voice. You are getting sleepy. Sleepy. When I count to three, you will play the magic episode. One, two, three. All by yourself today, huh? Well, don't worry. I'm going to harass you so much, it'll be like having an annoying little sidekick right there next to you. Okay, boot camp's over. Time for battle. I need you to pick a value for this one. Just buzz in. The value for this one is 3250. Well, what do we have here? Nothing up my sleeve. Ah, where's my arm? I got a trick for you. Pick a card, any card. Okay, now pick another card. And another one. Keep going. That's right, you've got it. Almost there. Okay, and done. Now that you have all 48 cards in the deck, what should we play? Euchre, Pinochle, Rummy, or Whist? Damn, key must have slipped. Hey, if you got a minute, take a look at this. Pinochle uses a special magic deck of only 48 cards. And so we're clear, there is absolutely no peeing on anybody's knuckles whatsoever. That just messes up the cards and nobody wants to play anymore. Grab that value. The total for this question is... Five grand. This one's called a farewell to arms and legs. It's go time. What animal would make the best magician's assistant for the saw off an animal's limbs trick? A frog, a turtle, a monkey, or a salamander? The freakish salamander can grow new limbs. Of course, the trick loses some excitement since the audience has to wait three weeks for the healed salamander to come out of the box. Ticket amount! The value for this question is 3750 bucks. For your enjoyment, the people versus balloon animals. Hey kids, it's Howdy Duty time. What constitutional amendment could children invoke to protest against the cruel and unusual punishment of watching birthday party magicians? The Eighth Amendment outlaws any cruel or unusual punishment, including mimes, making balloon animals, and yes, poor magicians. 
uh, dispatch, I need backup. I've got a report of a magician at a birthday party. Get down! He's got a newspaper cone full of milk! Everybody, get down! Choose an amount. For this one, I'll give you $4,000. Hey, guess what I've got here? It's time for Make a wrist test run. Hey, remember, try and solve it quick so you can win more cash. We're going to start this question out at $4,000. Okay, yank out your magic wand and tell me with what common phrase does this rhyme? And don't get spooked by the punctuation. No cuss, no pus. Now's the time to type in your answer and hit that return key. You see, now, if you waited, I could have given you a clue and you wouldn't have lost so much money. For my next illusion, I will turn this chickpea into a garbanzo bean. No cuss, no pus. Hey, it worked. But remember, kids, magic isn't as simple as repeating a few syllables. If it were, my wiener dog would be a six-foot redhead by now. Go ahead and pick an amount. Your value is 3500 bucks. I'm calling this one Mystified by Geometry. See if you can wrap your skull around this. If you use the equation I'm showing you right here, for which of these magical, mystical places will you be able to find the area, the Bermuda Triangle? I need to... Uh, I hate to bring you down, but... Here's the one the winners pick. In order to find the area of a triangle, you multiply the base times the height times one half. And then pray to whatever god you believe in, because you're in the Bermuda Triangle and you're about to be sucked into a vortex of mystery and time travel started by aliens and the people from Atlantis. Cool. Time to choose a value. Let's see how much you can win this time. $1,000. Here we have, and they lived trashily ever after. Hey, what if Prince Charming turned out to be a real loser? If Prince Charming marries Snow White and moves her to the Land of Enchantment, where might they end up living? A motel in Arizona, a shack in West Virginia, a trailer park in New Mexico. The state motto of New Mexico is the Land of Enchantment. Yeah, that's really enchanting. Prince Charming sitting around the double wide in his underwear, drinking cheap beer and scratching himself. I'm getting teary-eyed already. Grab a value. And here's what you can win on this question. $3,000. This category is, will work for peanut butter morsels. So do you remember in the movie how E.T., the extraterrestrial, used his magic glowing finger to miraculously heal Elliot? I get choked up just thinking about it. Well, imagine E.T. gets a job as a replacement magic fingers at a roadside motel. What will the little guy be doing? Checking in guests, distributing free contraceptives, making the bed. I've researched this one. Magic fingers are those coin-operated vibrating beds you find in your snazzier class motels across the country. Hey, with all those quarters, E.T. will definitely be able to phone home. Value time. The total value for this one is... 3250. We're calling this one. Is that a Magic Johnson in your pocket? Okay, let's go. What Magic Johnson talk show magically disappeared from the air after only two months? The Magic Show. The Magic. <laughs> Nothing but net. Boy, you think TV producers would know by now that if you want a talk show to work, you gotta hire comedy professionals like Dana Carvey or Chevy Chase. Time to pick a value. Let's see what this one comes to. Forty-seven fifty. Well, if it isn't my old friend. Bad touch, Uncle. Bad, bad. Let's go. Suppose your Uncle Lester pulls the first of the revamped 50 state quarters to be issued out from behind your ear. Which state's coin has he been palming? Vermont's, Delaware's, Pennsylvania's, or Hawaii's? 
Hawaii's quarter won't be issued until the year 2008. I like to think of it as punishment for releasing ham and pineapple pizza upon unsuspecting Midwesterners. The correct answer is... Prepare to be surprised and delighted by a sweaty Delaware quarter. Boy, thanks, Uncle Lester. Now you be a good boy and take that quarter down to the Motel 6 and ask for room 228. They got a monkey in there with a glowing finger. Give you a nice massage. Go ahead and choose a value. I bet you're going to become very intimate with that value. Prepare yourself for the steely gaze of a dissertat. This dissertat category name is The Last Temptation of Doug Henning. Yeah, you're going to like this one. I'll read off seven events and for each one. Okay, you've been through this. I'm just going to put your 30 seconds on the cross. Then. And we're off. Made it snow in... On the storm at sea. Made it snow... Walked right through. Walked on water. Flew through the air. Last one. Turn water. That's all of them. Hey, good work. You only missed one. That's nothing to feel bad about. Let's look at your new total. Well, now, doesn't that feel better? Go ahead and grab an amount. Okay, this one's worth... 4,500. Up next, I like magic. Put your head between your knees, because we're going down. How do you spell abracadabra backwards? Arbagcaraba, abracadabra, arbadacarba, or abracadaver. I'd imagine if you wanted to stuff a rabbit in your hat, you'd say arbacadarba. I think it may also mean your sister eats garbage in certain island tons, so please be careful. Buzz in for the amount. All right, then, let's see what this does for you. 3750 bucks. Quick, hand me the insecticide. It's time to bug out. Try and remember, buzz in when you see a bug that does not belong to the set. And you'll be working up to a final round value of 3750 bucks. Okay then, let's submerge ourselves, shall we? Las Vegas Hotels, buzz in when you see one that's not a Vegas hotel. in the tale of Peter Rabbit. <laughs> Fancy men's hats. Buzz in when you see one that ate a hat. Types of knots. Actors in the Witches of Eastwick. <laughs> Rides at the Walt Disney World Magic Kingdom in Florida. Actual card games. Well, you kicked some butt. Not much, but some. Choose a value. This question comes out to around 4750. The category? Send in the bruised and bleeding clowns. Okay, let's go. 
What would a Las Vegas audience witness if Siegfried and Roy were mauled to death on stage by the largest cat in the world? A puma with eyeliner marks. Tigers are the biggest cats, and Siberian tigers are the biggest of them all. Almost 25 feet long and 6,000 pounds. <laughs> I'm kidding. They are the biggest, but not that big. However, they do put away about four tons of meow mix a day, and it takes at least five hours to clean out their litter. Take a value. And this one's going to be worth twenty-seven fifty. This category is known as, aren't all balls magic? Okay, listen up. You know those magic eight balls? The black balls with the blue stuff inside, and you ask it questions and turn it upside down? They know everything, huh? If you ask the Magic 8 Ball whether or not the game of billiards originated in Spain, what will it say? You know, if it were right. Billiards was first played in France and England in the 1500s. It wasn't invented in Spain. I'll tell you, those things are amazing. They are always right. If you ask me, they got little dwarves in there or something. Pick any amount. All right, then. Grab hold of something. All rise. The Jack Attack is now in session. You should already know how this works. So let's get right to it. Here's your clue. I'm thinking of a number. Good luck. Something stinks, and since you're the only one here, must be you. Let's assess the damage. There it is. Hey, way to go. Who knew that playing with yourself could be so rewarding? You see, this is how those dirty, bad, filthy habits start. Now lean back, close your eyes, and say, You don't know Jack! GMFC introduces the giant. Arr, ahoy there! Drop anchor and come aboard! So, uh, how many be playing here? Say, do you have a name, lover? Mind typing it in for me? Got it. Okay, okay, I'll stop yammering. Now, now, get out there and pick up some loot. Just like in your last game. Freedom shall soon be mine. Ah, ho, 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 ho. Go now! Yep, this is it. You don't know Jack. I'm glad to see you had nothing more productive to do than sit and play a computer game by yourself. Well, to each their own, I guess. Now, shall we see if you've been paying attention? Time to make a choice. May I introduce, and for dessert, I'll eat my pants. $2,000 at stake on this one. Hey, you might want to check out this good old American recipe I just found. 
you might also want to buzz in and type your answer because this one's a fill in the blank. Hmm, let's see. Ingredients, one tri-cornered hat, one feather. Combined feather and hat, let's sit, call macaroni. <laughs> Whose recipe is Go on, do it! <laughs> it's Yankee Doodles, and it's a dandy. <laughs> and if he's putting feathers and hats in his macaroni, I don't even want to know what he's got in his hasty pudding. <laughs> want to pick a category? Hey, I know. How about a scurvy sea dog of a question? Get it right, I'm handing over 4,000 bucks. It's time. If the pirate Blackbeard were to search the part of his body known as the treasure trail, what would he find at the end of the trail? His no Here's Rongi. <laughs> what do you say we check out the right answer? Treasure trail is slang for that line of hair that runs from your navel down to little Schmitty. Arg! X marks the spot. Uh, Captain, that looks more like a herpy. <laughs> Go ahead, pick a category. <laughs> the category is starring Dennis Hopper, Peter Fonda, and Wilbur. Let's go $2,000 for this one. Now, I've probably mentioned how the slang term for a Harley Davidson is a hog, right? Good, because if the Hells Angels motorcycle gang wanted to begin riding actual hogs, which state, my good friends in Iowa have more pigs than anyone. Heck, they got more pigs than people. All right, men, tonight we ride. Let's go. Tell me which category you want. Well, what do we have here? Things that go, howdy, big boy, in the night. We're talking six grand here, so pay attention. And now, your question. Which of these would make for the wettest wet dream? A titillating dream about one gallon of water. An erotic dream about two liters of water. A sexy dream about three quarts of water. Two liters. My, that's a strange dream. <coughs> Gee, I guess you stay pretty dry at night, huh? Really? What are these water jugs doing under your bed? Nothing. I just buy them for the labels. Go ahead and pick one of these. Well done. You've just chosen a dis or dat. The category for this dis or dat question is hot toys for the young and old. Oh, I'm going to read off the names of seven different things. And for each one, you have to tell me if it's the brand name of a children's toy or the brand name of a sex toy. As each one of them. I'm ready if you are. Give me 30 seconds on that clock. And we're off. Beaded butterfly, toy, or pocket rocket, pearl panther, wonder stick, ultimate beaver, packet, last one, waterproof. Gee, you only got four of them right. Well, no surprises here. Let's look at your score. Enjoy those table scraps, peasant. Want to pick a category? And I believe this one's called Pack That Train Up. This one's worth 4000 bucks. Yep, nothing's more American than a Saturday night date with your sweetheart in the car, driving out to a romantic spot and hooking up. Yeah. When the Union Pacific and Central Pacific Railroads hooked up in 1869, where did they have to park to drive the golden... I'll tell you what, this'll be our little secret. <laughs> Here's the one the winners pick. When the Union Pacific and Central Pacific lines hooked up at Promontory Point, Utah, well, the next day, all the kids were talking about the Transcontinental Railroad. Now, you didn't hear it from me, but apparently Central Pacific saw a lot of action because of that sweet caboose. Time to choose a category. You are about to embark upon the attack. Pay close attention to the items on the screen. Buzz in on the... Oh, well, you already know how to play. Well, we'll see about that. Here's your clue. I wonder where that wonder is. 
time to put on your wandering caps. Well, have mercy! You annihilated that attack! Let's check out what it did to your score! That's the game! You know, if I had to choose one word to describe this game, I'd choose... Eh. Now, if I had to choose four words to describe you, I'd choose... You don't know Jack! You don't know Jack!